Team, if you didn't see the link in the community post, maybe you're brand new to the channel, look down in the description and you're going to see a link so that you can download a couple pieces of paper so that you can print them off. One is going to be a worksheet and the next one is a map with legend, right? And you're also, for this exercise, going to need your own uh, protractor. Uh, I'll leave a link down there as well. If you don't have one, you can always buy one. Come back. You can watch this and learn some stuff. And then uh, go check your work uh, again because you can print these things off for free. Protractor may set you back five or ten bucks. So in the course of this, uh, you should leave with confidence in your ability to plot points to determine direction both grid and magnetic as well as determining your back azimuth and establishing a distance between point to point we'll also look on the back end just some simple basic ttps that you can have in your kit bag as you're planning routes and that's one of the important things here so let's get to this all right so the only other things you're going to need besides the worksheet and the map is a pencil here's my old lime green pencil and then you will also need a protractor. Now I have several different types. I have a round one. I have a GTA protractor, standard army issued if you will. And then I have two that RM makes and these are made right up the road here in Washington state. What I like about both of these is they both include a back azimuth in red. This one has a nice long scale on it and that's square. They also have make a triangle one that looks just like the GTA protractor but ultimately it doesn't matter just so long as it has the right scales in this case we're using a 1 to 50 scale and I'll use the government issued one now you'll notice uh, particularly on this one and this one's not that bad that there's still a little bit of plastic between the black line and the edge of the protractor where it's cut I never cut my protractors because I always want to be able to see that line I'll just always move my protractor over as needed uh, to make sure that that dot that I make is directly underneath the black line. If that makes sense. So we'll get started. So the first thing that we need to, to do is to determine the grid coordinates of a building that's in the upper portion of grid square 2102. So we know that we're going to be looking in this grid square. And we can kind of see it right here. And that, that's going to be the next one that we're going to move to. So we'll move over to the map. Always place your protractor down, zero to the top, 90 to the right. We'll always start off reading to the right, to 2, 1, and then up to 0, 2. So we know that we are working again in 2, 1, 0, 2, this grid square right here, 2, 1, 0, 2. And so I'll place a protractor down so that on this one, the bottom right-hand corner of my uh Protractor is on the bottom left hand corner of the grid square that we're going to move to because so we're going to slide this over to the right until that building right there is directly underneath this black line. So we'll slide it over and then we can stop and then we can read up. And in this case, I read that as 2, 1, Four six zero two nine six. Now we need to know the magnetic azimuth and distance from that building to the closest building to its north. So we can see directly to its north. We'll put a circle around where we're starting from, and that's the building that we're going to shoot to. So what I need to do first is to determine an azimuth. And I'm going to place the center of my protractor directly over top of that building. Now there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can take a sheet of paper and put it underneath your protractor. And then just rotate that paper until everything lines up as such. And then we can read up. And in this case, I'm reading 12 degrees. Now, but that's a grid azimuth of 12 degrees, right? So in this case, in order to get a magnetic azimuth, I have to look at my declination diagram and see that to convert a grid azimuth to a magnetic, I need to subtract the GM angle, 
GM angle is 17 degrees, so that's 12 minus 17. It gives me 355 degrees. The other way that you could do that is simply by lining up your protractor from where you're starting to where you're going to go and attempt to use that straight line on your protractor as that line. And this is what I'll commonly do out in the field. And then I will take my pencil and make a mark away from where I'm working. Lay my protractor back down. Because not every edge is going to be perfectly straight. And if you're a little off during this exercise, I mean, that ultimately it's not a big deal because we're all using different instruments, different materials, different printers involved. So as long as we're getting close and you understand what we're doing, that's all we're looking for. So the next thing we need to do is to determine our distance. So here, uh, again, a couple ways I can do this. I can use the scale on my protractor, lining it up, and then reading off to where I'm going to try to go. And I'm going to call that 450 meters. The other thing that we could do is take that straight piece of paper that we have and make two tick marks where we're starting from and where we're going and then either use the scale on our map or again use that scale on our protractor to see what we have making sure that we're using the right scale and that one reads about 475 but again you know tick marks and bump marks on with our pencil you're gonna have a little bit of error all right so next up we need to determine the grid coordinates for the point where a trail or road departs into an open field and enters into the forested area. So we're looking at 2097. This is going to be our insertion point. So right to 20 and then up to 97. So we know that we're working in this grid square. And we're looking at this road right here. And right where it crosses into the forested area so this is an open prairie and then this is the forested area so what is that point right there always start off with your protractor in the bottom left hand corner slide it to the right and then read up and in this case i read two zero three zero nine seven five zero Now we're going to use the, the following rally points or waypoints and determine a distance direction from the previous point as well as determining our back azimuth. So we're looking at grid azimuth, magnetic azimuth, back azimuth, and distance. So this insertion point is 2030 So the first point that we need to go look and find is 19759780 and again bring our protractor back down to 1997 slide it to the right to 75 and then read up 9780 And when I lift up my protractor, I can kind of see that it's right on the apex of that road. So then I'll just slide my protractor over, mark my point, and then bring my protractor back down just to help verify what I've done. And that point is good to go. Right, so now we rinse and repeat to determine our direction. Grid first, then magnetic, and then we can get our distance. So again, whether you use your protractor as a straight line or whether or not you lay your protractor down And connect your dots it's totally up to you in this case I get 302 
for grid azimuth, for magnetic, I get 285, and my back azimuth would be 105. Back azimuth is the exact opposite direction as your as your other azimuth, your heading that you're traveling towards. And for distance, I get 600 meters. From our insertion point to Rally Point Sierra, and now we need to go to Rally Point Tango, which is going to be 2015-9857. Protractor down. This to 15 and then up to 57. Right, so now we have our point here, which is kind of right on the triangle there, pretty close to it. And we we'll do the same thing again, get direction, magnetic azimuth, or back azimuth, and our distance. Again, you could use straight line and sheet of paper, draw your line, whatever it is that you like to do. In this case, I come up with 29 degrees for grid. 17 for magnetic, 192 for a back azimuth, and we're moving out 900 meters. That's quite the leg. So now we'll go ahead and rinse and repeat. Uh, if you need to, you can pause, uh, and then we'll check back on our work. 2110-9905. I get 66 degrees, 49 degrees, 229 for back azimuth, and a whopping 1100 meters. That one would be rough. So, so far, we've gone from our insertion point. One, two, three. Now we're looking for kilo. 2133 9 or 9 And here I get 24 degrees, 7 degrees, 187, 650. Off to echo. Here I get 23 degrees, 6, 186. 1300 meters. Lastly, to our objective, 2100, so we're in this grid square. So it's going to be 2150 0078. Looks like uh, 255. 238, 58, and about 260 meters. And so a couple of takeaways as far as why we did the route the way we did. Uh, and it is you never want to move directly towards your objective. So from our insertion point, we moved off. And then we started to zigzag our way back in. There's all kinds of routes. There's no right, no right or wrong answer as far as how you do this. Just so you don't want to move straight to your objective. And then you're, here we use an offset so to get to our objective rally point by moving off and then back in. The way you'd want to depart your friendly lines from like that insertion point is to move off and cut a figure four. And then to move to your objective, you can do a similar feature or move around in a circle like this. It clears all sides of your objective, and then you can zero it down into your actual objective where you're trying to go to. If not, you can do a similar technique, again, just coming in and then dog-legging in. Team, I hope you enjoyed the content of this one. If you did, if you didn't, leave some comments down below. 
Maybe it was some lessons learned that you or I have picked up in this process. I mean, if I made some mistakes, by all means, call me out. Maybe it was in just the way I presented things. Maybe it was in some of our measurements that you or I may have had that were off. And that way we can continue to grow and enlarge an authentic community uh, where we build one another up. That's what this channel is all about. I already know that you've already made it to this far, man. You already know to absolutely crush that like button, leave some comments, and what that does ultimately is it, is it gives YouTube a reminder to feed you Stokermatic videos, right? And then, of course, consider sharing this out with a friend, battle buddy. Maybe you know somebody who's in the service, getting ready to go in the service, go to a, a assessment selection, whatever the case is. We're going to follow this up with another video that is going to use a USGS map. So that'll be a 1 to 24 instead of a 1 to 25. And we'll we'll have some fun with that one. Team, as always, appreciate you guys. And until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked. More men now than ever before are suffering from an outbreak that scientists now call Low M. You and your compadres have already been exposed to this deadly and viral disease. But there is a cure for your family, for our nation. We need you to take this now as quickly as possible to reverse the damages before it's too late. The Tears of Akami are a proprietary blend, a clinically proven set of virtues, values, and beliefs guaranteed to get you stoked and return balance to your masculinity. Discover more today at youtube.com slash stokermatic. Team, if you want to master your craft, develop your tactical virtue, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on future content. Consider becoming a channel member. It's going to give you exclusive access to content not available to anybody else. I appreciate you guys. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.